Hello! Welcome to the channel again. It is that time of the week where I get to sit and look at all the YouTube comments from the previous week. And man, oh man, you know, every week it just never gets old. It really doesn't. I know a lot of people aren't like into this type of video, but I have a, a certain segment of my audience that definitely is. And, you know, I'm glad that the people that enjoy it truly enjoy it because I, I really enjoy it. I really, 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 really do. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. What do you think? If you want to be in these videos, just let me know. Let me know. And yeah, leave a comment. That's how I know. We'll start with Fire Waffen here. My big thing is I'm not competitive because I feel it would get boring seeing the same decks over and over again. I could be wrong on that front, but what I'm saying is I like Digimon. The game was fun, but I only want to play for fun. I don't want a sweat fest where everyone has to play one of the th these three to five options in order to win something. This is what my locals was, and as for a result, it died off. I hope Bandai fixed things for competitive players, though. So, this is a super fascinating comment to me, because you'll get people on both ends of the spectrum. You'll get people that get bored if there's not a lot of decks in the meta, and you'll get people that are bored if there's a lot of decks in the meta. It's kind of like a catch-22. This is not something that will please everyone. I will say to this, though, if Fire Ruffin wants to play, Ultimate Cups are pretty good for it, because so many decks kind of get in there, you know what I mean? Like, I played two Ultimate Cups so far this format. I think I've played, like, 12 different decks combined with the two. That's not the same three or five decks. So, like, there's a lot of variety right now. It kind of depends, right? We got past the point of it was just blue hybrid or yellow hybrid. We got, we got past that. Um, and hopefully it keeps going that way. I don't know that BT14 is going to help it much maybe a little bit but well time will tell understandable though um not fan tier zero formats and that's not a big deal digital never had tier zero though so it's okay this is a very long comment uh, i like this one though so this is from lauslafile tcg i hope i said that right alternate cup itself is a good idea as an alternate format helps to see different decks and things like that the main problem that I see this year is that we kept the exact same monocolor format for all the events, plus the pricing being the exact same all the time. Pricing was pretty bad, honestly, especially because, again, it was kept the same for the whole year, and now we know what the next year we'll be getting black or gray one pricing. It's not that relevant anymore. Do we know that? Is that, is that actually confirmed? If that's confirmed, someone please tell me. Anyway. Well, and what I believe it's the most important factor at this time. What's the point of competing Ultimate Cups if you couldn't get a Nationals invite? This, I mentioned that point. That was something that a small uh, part of the audience, or not the audience, small part of the digital community had, was that Ultimate Cups and Evo Cups didn't get you Nationals invites back when that was a relevant thing. Now it's not. It was definitely a, a, a big turnoff for some people. Like, I know actually myself... You know, for the first bit of the year, I always prioritize regionals just to make sure I can go to nationals if I can go to nationals. Uh, and Ultimate Cups were always on the back burner. Now, to be fair, uh, I didn't really start playing Ultimate Cups until this year. I played the one at uh, the Gen Con last year. It didn't go overly too well. But, uh, like, this year I really started grinding them. Uh, just because I felt I was really excited about the monocolor format and excited the prospect of change. They got boring. I don't know if I'm going to sign up for the Ultimate Cups in December. I probably am. Let's be real. Probably I'm doing that. But it just doesn't feel as good. Uh, and this guy alludes to a lot of points. He basically says uh, what I said. But the Black Warcraft Prizing, though, is really interesting to me. If that's actually a thing, I really want to know about it now. That'd make a really good video. Synchro Sean. More in-person events is needed. Bandai is lazy enough getting us more in-person. Uh, it is partially Bandai's fault. It's also partially the TO's fault. It's responsible. Uh, if Bandai did do two more, t gave more TO's though, there could be more in-person events. More in-person events means happier people, I'm sure. Uh, JMO Cray. Hear me out. What about a level 2 to 5 format? I think a lot of decks are actually playable up to level 5, but then there are a lot of risks and not being able to go up to level 6, 7. At the same time, a format like that couldn't do level less like Mother. I think some cards get new life this format. Every format anyone can suggest, there will be winners and losers. Like, for example, monocolor format. Any monocolor deck is a winner. Things like Hunters and Royal Knights are losers. Uh, this idea is pretty cool. 
Uh, winners would be basically anything that operates in that stratosphere, like Hunters, Crosshair can do it just fine. They don't need their big boss monsters. Blue Flare doesn't need their big boss monsters. Uh, so definitely, definite winners there. It's not top of my head. And then losers would be something like... Um, uh, I lost my train of thought here for a second. Royal Knights <laughs> and Mother. Yeah, those, those, those decks kind of get hurt. Also, things that really need their six to operate, like Bielzemon, can't really exist either. No matter what format you pick, there will be winners and losers. It doesn't really matter. You could say, I, you know what format would be cool? Insert X here. That would be okay. It would be pretty okay. Um, while I read this next comment, I'm going to respond to a text real quick. Don't, don't mind me. Don't mind me. This one's very important. There's some stuff going on today, and I just got to make sure everything's okay. Yep, indeed. You know, sometimes, sometimes YouTube and chat, Twitch chat, live a life. Try to enjoy yourself. Because if you don't enjoy yourself, you'll end up miserable. Like me. All right, PKR7639 here. Um, Ultimate Cup is a weird format, in my opinion. It makes some decks uh, way more powerful. And they really are, since the one-color rule. I remember even until a few weeks ago, some people were asking for Analog Man to go to one standard format because it was so good in Ultimate Cup format. I love playing Machine Your Mon, but it's not even a top eight best decks in the standard format at the moment. People need to realize that they lose to a certain deck a few times at locals or event. It, it isn't immediate OP or broken. The first part of this content is basically the last comment. The last part is definitely something that's considered true. A lot of people think things are OP or broken. For example, at the start of format, there's always a deck that really just makes people upset, furious and enraged. Like people who were pissed off with Shine Greymon saying, Marcus needs to go to one today. Right now it needs to go to one. There is no way it can stay. And um, while that's all fun and well and all that fun stuff, it's not necessarily the case. Is the deck tier one? Absolutely. Is it beatable? Absolutely. There's other decks that top in Digimon. It's been a long time since we've had a deck like, you know, Blue Hybrid that just took a lot of top spots. I think the closest it got was 50% or something. And I know that people saw the Mirage Gagamon top four, the very first Ultimate Cup uh, overseas, and people lost their minds. I, I remember that very specifically, but, like, it turned out to flesh out to be much more than that. So, yeah, people need to stop complaining. I think that's the, the, the important message there. If people just stopped complaining, the world would be a better place. Digidex says that Diabormon is about to become the strongest deck. I hope you're right. That would be really cool. The Analog Wizard. Where the hell are my attack of heavy mobile Digimons? I literally refresh Event Pack 5 cards like 10 times a day, hoping they'll be available. Do not buy Event Pack 5 cards right now. It's a waste of money. It's burning money. Don't do it. Just stop. Cease. Mid Mig Dog 14. Mario with the effortless luscious hair. Keep it up and more ladies will subscribe. That would be uh that would definitely be a thing. That's uh you love the hair. You love to see it, you know what I mean? We embrace this Lord Farquaad lifestyle right now. We do. We really do. Uh as for more ladies, there you you say that, but there's actually I learned um through the Russell Brand News, if you guys don't know what the Russell Brand News is, uh, ba basically this content creator that got like, has been accused and allegated of sexually assaulting people, whatever. Uh, YouTube demonetized him because of uh, some kind of, if you abuse your powers of content creation and cause damage to your, your viewers and in that kind of field, um, that could be problematic. Just a fun little fact there. Uh, I would love the ladies to subscribe. It would be really cool. But, you know, it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, I don't care who subscribes. Man or woman, it doesn't matter to me. But the hair will stay. Jedrock7079. Making top 10 with DB Brewer is pretty impressive. But it will never compensate for the fact that your fiance Fiona was stolen from you at the altar by Ogremon. The, the, I include this comment for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is because it's a Lord Farquaad meme. The second reason is because of something really interesting. I, I um, I, I don't know when the video is going to go live. I recorded myself talking about the card shop and the status of the card shop. That video will be up at some point. I don't know when. Anyway, 
Um, in that video, I described a personal situation that happened to me where some shitbag douche piece of shit from my local scene straight up stole one of the women from me that I was interested in. And someone that I could have had a relationship at one point in my life. Some fucking ogre. So I'm not going to... I, I can't dox the guy. He works at a fast food fry joint. That's the extent of his life. And he just swooped in and told this person all sorts of nasty things about me. Turned her off from me completely. And that was it. Not the same situation, but very similar. Some fucking ogre. Fucking douchebag. It happens. This shit happens, man. Uh, virtual Victrola. One thing about the title comment. While I, while I agree with the other comments that online is great for people in areas where it's hard to play in person, there is something to the personal interaction and camaraderie of an in-person event. I know someone where that's a huge part of the game to him. I really understand that. A good community and good players support both. Yes, true. I'm also one of those people that gets really, really titillated by in-person events. Maybe not the right word choice there. But it's fine, and it's all good in the hood. Uh, Death Seeker Gibbsy. Is that because real card game players are socially starved nerds that their only real interactions with people is across the table? Laughing emoji. I do get it, though. There is more fun in real life events. Online tournaments do serve the idea that you can attend from anywhere. And for some people, it isn't financially or logistically viable to travel to an in-person event. This is very true. I'm just going to friendly remind people that if it wasn't for COVID-19, these online events wouldn't even exist, probably. I'm just letting people know. Okay? Okay. Jose Delgar. Topping in every tournament, it's impossible. On the last Ultimate Cup I participated, I crossed the former top eight, and he finished like 60th at that time. Not everyone can top everything. I think in a game like Digimon, if every if someone topped an event every single time they played, like they had a 100% conversion rate, I think that'd be pretty sus. Um, especially if they were winning. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 statistically an anomaly to do it. Unless you're cheating in your camera angle. Your, your camera angle, you know. Uh, oh, fuck, that's going to fall. Your, your camera angle's a little messed up, you know? Chronicles. I mean, the Blue Fire matchup must have been a little difficult. In terms of Yellow Hybrid, it was not. It was free. I promise. I promise that Ultimate Cup Blue Flare is a free matchup if you play Yellow Hybrid or your money back guaranteed. You gotta know how to play against the matchup. We gotta practice against it just to know how it's done. But yeah, it, it's really easy. Where's Ancient Grey Mario? Says Cybernetic Zone. I might play Ancient Grey the last Ultimate Cup. I haven't quite decided yet. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. Well, but very possible. The problem is Ancient Grey loses to Balfamon. I need Balfamon to like get out of the format before I play it again. It's just, it's just a solid wall. I hate it. Um, and I believe this is the last comment of the day, actually. I, yeah, this is definitely it. Brando. First comment. I agree that I don't really see how the Alteress deck can develop beyond the package EX4 gave us. Additionally, as a Gammon believer, I want to say thanks for developing my market dot process, which allowed me to get Cano, Altart, and Winter Promo Gamma for much cheaper. I agree RBO1 Gamma will be okay, but with LMO1 it gets good. Yeah. Thanks for watching Market Watch, buddy. I'm glad that my Market Watch inspired you to do things and stuff. It's really cool. Uh, and seriously, you love to see it. That's it, though. That's it for today's Market Watch. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'll see you later. Bye.